Okay, this is the second part of abilities and skills, and now we're going to get more specific. Last time we were a real general talking about all these biases and all these different personality traits. What I'm going to do today, if I can get my clicker to work, is talk about three different areas, verbal, math, and spatial abilities, and talk about how men and women might differ in these three different skill sets. Now, before I get there, I want to introduce this term called meta-analysis, and what is that? It's kind of an analysis of an analysis. I have this definition right here, statistical analysis that combines results of multiple studies. So, if one study says that men are better at math than women, I want to say that could be a fluke, but what if five studies said it? If I could analyze a lot of studies that show this general difference between men and women, then it becomes more robust. I don't want to go off on statistics right now, but I am a statistician. I used to work like uh, that for a living, you know, for all these different firms. But it's like if I really like statistics and like if this doesn't make sense to you, you use things that are a meta analysis maybe in your everyday life. I use Rotten Tomatoes as an example because I'm a movie buff. So if I go to Rotten Tomatoes, sorry, but I'm not sorry, here's Joker, and it says 68%. That's a meta-analysis. Why? Because what it did is count up, you can't see on here, 576 people, and for each individual person, do they get a rotten or a fresh tomato, and then they see what percentage of tomatoes were rotten versus fresh, and so that's like a kind of a statistical analysis where each one of these is an individual study, review of the movie, but then I'm doing a review of the reviews. Okay, hopefully I didn't confuse you, but why am I saying this? Because a lot of the research that I'm going to show is based on reviewing all the literature that we have about math, verbal abilities, or spatial abilities. Okay, so the first area is verbal abilities. Now, there's all kinds of tests that you could get into for verbal abilities, like just simple spelling and grammar and syntax, but analogies, metaphors, we could go on and on with this all day long. But when I talk about this, there's been a consistent you know, edge for females, a slight advantage on a variety of verbal tasks like this. If you look down here, these are meta-analyses. That's why I did it. They reviewed all the literature at that time. I should go out and get some more current ones. But, you know, consistently over the years, we've seen that women have a slight advantage on verbal tests. Now, statistically speaking, if you look at this right here, you might not like statistics, but I love it. I was a statistician for years. And so you get this average right here. There's a slight difference between the pink one, that's kind of pink, and the blue one. Guys are a little bit less good at it, okay? But doesn't mean that guys can't be stellar or girls can't fuck at it. There's variation around the average, but on average, as a whole, girls are a little bit better than guys. Now, the second area is math abilities. Mathematical abilities, same thing. It can be simple, addition, subtraction, division, multiplication, that kind of stuff, right? Or you can get more sophisticated algebra, trig, calculus, all these areas. And we've talked about some of the biases within STEM already. But when we look at math, we could go to these tests. I don't know why they don't do this with the English part, because they break it into math and English on a lot of these tests, right? The verbal part, the mathematical part. But males have a consistent advantage on math ability. Now, that might be due to cultural bias, and I'll come back to that. But overall, if you look at these first two areas, we've consistently found that girls are just slightly better at verbal tasks and guys are slightly better at mathematical tasks. So for the test, remember that. Now, if I show it statistically again, does it mean that girls can't be really good at math and guys can't suck at math? But as a whole, guys are just a tad bit better. This is why I love this, and I teach about this specifically when I talk about racism and other areas, you know, too, when we're talking about differences between groups. Okay, so spatial abilities. Those first two areas kind of bore Tim. I like talking about spatial abilities, three-dimensional abilities, how you can twist things in a three-dimensional space and think about it. This is why I love video games. I don't know if you're a gamer, but if you don't have spatial abilities, you're not going to do very good on video games. So what I'm fixing to show is not video games. Sometimes in class I do, 
but it's this little challenge they have between men and women. And it's about who can pack the trunk of a car better. And so it's on the morning news, uh, the national news that is, and I'm gonna show you this little clip, it'll speak for itself, and then we'll come back after this and talk about specific spatial abilities. So one thing we want to know, how do male and female brains solve problems differently? Well, it's really interesting. We had an episode on, the, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, supposedly. And we had a game called Pack the Trunk in which couples were asked to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we had two cars that were packed to the brim. Their trunks were packed to the brim. And then we and then they, had, they, got, they, got, they got to study the trunks. And then we emptied them. And then we had these couples compete to see who could repack the trunk better. And what we expected to find is that because male brains are said to have more spatial, better spatial mm. reasoning, mm -hmm. that the men would be able to pack the trunk no. better. No, yeah. Gail and I could have told you <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. No. But what, did you find, what did you find, Jason? Okay, yeah. we, we did. That is exactly what we found, actually. In the majority of the cases, the men <laughs> seem to be a little bit better. Rigged. The trunk. Really? Rigged. Yeah. 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 See, actually, I, I, I agree, agree with you. Okay, I'm with sorry. We need to have a competition between yeah. Charlie I think and Gail and Nora about who can pack the trunk better. I would love that. And the the, the, well, the age old thing about directions. Yes. Who well, has a better sense of direction? Well, it is it is said that men have a better sense of direction because when we evolved as early hominids, you know, in the savannas of Africa, the men had to go hunt and they had to figure out how to get back to the camp. So it's kind of like they have this built-in GPS. You know, we're kind of wired that way. Yeah. Jason, they don't What's even the... like to ask for directions, and then you're running exactly. all around an hour say. out of the way. Women yeah. are smart so, enough to ask for directions. That's right. Yeah, I will there's stop a little bit of male ask. pride. You know? So is it true? What did you find out? Yes, about yes, it is. Oh. It is true that men tend to have a better sense of direction. Right. Not that it matters anymore because we're dovetailing those capacities to our smartphones. But tell us so what are women better at then? Because you just keep talking about that we, men are better than women. So what are women better, better at? Intuitive you have no idea what you more in touch with their feelings. You have no idea. Okay, I hope you like that little movie. I know they're being kind of silly, but I love the trunk packing experiment. I think it's a simple experiment, and it can kind of show how your mind works in rotating these things in a three-dimensional space. So I think I have three spatial tasks that favor men, and then I'll get to two spatial tasks that favor women. Man, that's a mouthful. Okay, so the first one is mental rotation. Mental rotation makes me think of video games. I'm really old, so I think of Tetris. This looks exactly like Tetris to me. Can you rotate this and find the right shape over here or how it fits with one another? But newer video games too. I mean, parents think, oh, video games don't teach you anything. It's like, you gotta have ob memory for the three-dimensional environment you're running around in. You better have some memory for it. It's like, have I been here before? Then in the puzzles like Lara Croft Tomb Raider or God of War, you have to think about how do I twist this thing a certain way and unlock the door? And so there's all kinds of non-verbal, non-mathematical tasks, spatial tasks in video games. Okay, maybe guys are better at this also, and I'll come back to this, because physics and like hunting and trajectories and all that stuff we talked about before. Second one, I call it embedded figures, but here's a figure over here, and you're supposed to find it hidden somewhere over here. It's pretty obvious to me because I've made it that way, but I'll make it more obvious. Here it is right here. I think that has to do with like being out in the woods and finding hidden things like I'm in the desert almost every day I might go right now after I do this lecture But I see snakes and owls and foxes and all kinds of stuff But a lot of people don't see this like see that owl right over there. He's hidden But if you're a hunter, you better be able to find hidden stuff Okay Number three is a real mouthful spatio-temporal perception space and time perception. I call it trajectory, if I can spell right. Trajectory. Guys are a little bit better than girls at this. Well, one of my favorite things to do is get high and play Frisbee. But when I play Frisbee with people, I don't watch the Frisbee the whole time I'm trying to run and get it. I pretty much run exactly to the spot it's going to land. As soon as it leaves your hand over here, I know kind of where it's going to land. I don't know how. I don't go out and do mathematics. I used to have a Frisbee dog. He would do the same thing. He's not doing mathematics or verbal abilities. And so what this physics teacher argued, if you think about boys, they play a lot more sports early on. Maybe that's changing, but that involve trajectory and figuring out where something's going to land in time and space. And so this physics teacher, who is female, would only have classes of girls trying to learn physics, and she would just take them out and say, hey, let's go shoot some basketball or throw the, a football around, or even maybe shoot a bow and arrow. 
and then I'll come teach you about trajectory and you'll have that experiential background to work from. Okay, so there's two spatial tasks that favor women. And the first one is called scanning. So if I show you this desk over here and you look at it for a minute, and then you look at the desk, four desk on the right, you're supposed to be able to pick the one that's identical. Now, I don't know why girls are better at this, but I've always loved these games. I don't know if that makes me a girl, but so what? It's this one right here. See, this one doesn't have legs. The drawers are messed up. This drawer is messed up. I've just seen this one a number of times. Now, the other task that girls are better at, I call it concentration. Do you remember this game as a kid? I'm going to show you all these things over here. Okay, look at them for a minute. Now I'm going to hide them. Which ones are really in the first slide, the first batch. And so you go, oh, I think there was a chicken over there and a guitar, maybe an ice skate. You see what I'm talking about? I don't know why girls are better at these two tasks than men. My guess is the gatherer part of hunter-gatherer societies. If the guys are having to go out and find their way back to camp, and so they're also throwing things and trajectories, maybe the girls are around camp and they have all the objects that we've collected and things like this. I have to know where they're at and which ones are the same, and if I'm gathering berries, which ones are good and bad, things like this. Okay, I hope I made sense on that section. Okay, we're almost done with spatial abilities. I have one more thing to talk about, but it's one of my favorite things to talk about. It's called wayfinding. It has a lot to do with finding your way, just like it sounds to the environment, and not getting lost. Now, I don't know if guys are better at this or girls are better at this. They try to debate this on that little movie, but... I'm a guy and I've always been like this. I'm an Eagle Scout. You could drop me in the middle of the deepest, darkest woods. I'm going to find my way out. I'm not exaggerating. I go into the middle of the desert all the time, way off the trail and find my way home just fine. But anyway, enough about me. When I talk about wayfinding, one of the animals I'm fascinated with are hummingbirds. He's not out there right now, but I have a hummingbird that comes and visits me all day long. And they've studied hummingbirds because they think that they have these cognitive maps of the environment in their head. And I think I have the same thing. I mean, I lived in Atlanta, everything's named Peachtree, but I just have a sense of which way to go. And so some of that's cardinal directions, north, e south, east, and west, but these birds have to know where the caches of food, like the feeders are, whose feeders is who, if you know what I'm talking about right now, they're very territorial. And so they're really neat little animals in a lot of respects, but especially about their knowledge of the environment. And if you're a video gamer, you better have a cognitive map right up here in your head, too. Now, another animal that they've studied with cognitive maps, Tallman really is the one that started studying this, and he started looking at mice. And if you think about when a mouse runs a maze, he develops a map in his head eventually of which is the dead end and which is the right way, you know, all the different things he's tried based on experience. This is a simple maze. But eventually he taught him to run this simple maze, and so he surmised they had this cognitive map in their head. So now he takes this same mouse and he puts him down here. Sorry for all that drawing. Now when he puts him down here, you would think he would run straight up, just like he did, like this. But Tallman found something really neat. He does on the very first time he runs this way. The soon as you put that mouse in here, he goes, whoop, look, I have an alternative route. I know the goal's up here, and in my, that's fucking smart. That's so smart. This is why I love animals. Not only hummingbirds or mice, but we underestimate their cognitive abilities. Okay, so we have these same kind of cognitive maps as well. I wish we were in class. I would really go off on this. Now, Stabener in 2001 did some research on this, and what he did is he found that men tend to use cardinal directions, like I've been talking about, north, south, east, west, and having a mental map or cognitive map of the environment, kind of like the hummingbird. Whereas women are more about landmarks, like, okay, you're going to go down, there's a circle, okay, you take a ride, and then you're going to go down the street a little bit, and you're going to see a TJ Maxx on your left, but it's not right there in that parking lot. I don't know how you do directions. This would be a great experiment to do if you were going to create your own experiment. Just to ask guys and girls, how would you get from point A to point B? How many north, south, east, west do you get? Because I tell people the southwest corner, how many of the big tree or the circle K or whatever else do you get? And how do men and women differ in this respect? 
Now, it's kind of a wash when it comes to men versus women on spatial abilities. Sometimes girls are better, sometimes guys are better. So as far as the test goes, just know the three that guys are better at and the two that girls are better at. Now, let me sum this whole thing up. Why are, is there this difference, it seems like, when we talked, we did find some good differences in the math area and the verbal area. I don't know if you remember me talking early on how the testosterone wash influences the brains of men, but somehow that masculinization of the brain might make it more prone to three-dimensionality, mathematical abilities, and maybe that comes from eons of, you know, evolutionary forces at work. Whereas women were back at the camp, they had to talk to people, they had to communicate, and they don't have the testosterone wash. Their brains are more lateralized, and so maybe that's one of the reasons they're better over here at the verbal task. Now, my other argument is the hunter-gatherer society, that if you're wandering off away from camp, you better be able to wayfind your ass back with the elk that you just killed, and you better be able to throw a spear and know what trajectories do and things like this, whereas women are at the camp. They're in charge of different activities, especially here's all the stuff, where's the thing, and all the items that we collected, are these good or bad items? things like that. Okay, I hope I made sense in this section. The next section that we're fixing to move on to is called school. Okay, so this section, I hope y'all are still with me. I kind of got tired there for a minute. I had to take a break, but it's all about school. And why don't I include it in skills and abilities? Well, at school, maybe we start to push girls in different directions than we do boys. I don't know if you can see this little boy over here. So when I talk about school, I'm going to talk about four different kinds of school, you know, early on elementary school, then in the middle, middle school and high school, and I'll barely mention a few things about college. Now, as far as elementary school goes, I don't have a lot of research. I'm just going to show a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to show is that it seems like teachers spend more time with boys. This isn't the only study, but it is a study that shows this. And this was regardless of their own gender. Even if you're a girl teacher, you spend more time with boys. So female teachers spend more time with boys, but a lot of this has to do with boys are raised in hell. Wasn't that the fourth component of the male stereotype? And girls don't really have that in their stereotype. I don't know if you buy into those, but that's one of the things that they argue is that, well, yeah, boys are getting a lot more attention, but they're also like causing a lot more trouble. It's not always true. Okay, what is the other thing that they find in elementary school? That from elementary school on, that girls make better grades than boys do. Now, that's kind of wild. I didn't know this, but it is true. And so if you go out and look at the research, um, this is from 2000, but I just went out and got some current things from APA 2014. Yeah, you can see right here. Girls make higher grades than boys in all school subjects. If I can show this right here. So that's not too many years ago. And I don't know what the date is on here, but the Atlantic. Why do girls tend to get better grades than boys do? And one of the arguments they use goes back to the hell raising. If the girls are the opposite of that, they're taught to be compliant and nice and sweet. And don't be raising hell and acting like, you know, a ruffian. Boys are kind of given that latitude. And so that might translate into, hey, I'm just not going to do the assignment. Fuck that shit. And whereas girls are just like, oh, I better do the assignment because that's what I'm supposed to do. I don't know if that's a good explanation, but that's the one that they use. Okay, when it comes to middle school, I want to focus on math for a minute. Why? Because what some researchers have found, if I can get my clicker to work, is that right around age 12 or 13, that boys start to take off in their mathematic abilities compared to girls. Now, why would that happen, 12 or 13? Uh, it's called puberty. Now, all of a sudden, your, your body becomes alive. And girls have another capability. Not only are they, like, going for a career, but they might be a mama. Now, this might be heterosexist, but what Bush and Simmons, who are sociobiologists, say, that this decreased interest in math and physical science and increased you know, interested, like, oh, I might be a mom and have babies and this thing and other, might be the reason you see the disparity between grades. I don't know if I completely buy into that 100%, but girls might, you know, have this decline in confidence, but actually they still make better grades. It's very weird. 
And I know personally, like my sister, as soon as she came into puberty and started being a really pretty girl, all of a sudden, you know, she wasn't quite the straight A student she was in all those other classes because she had geared her attention a little bit different. That doesn't make her a bad person. That's just society. So if you think about middle school, puberty comes on. Now all of a sudden, you know, you have all this stuff, your first period, you could be a mother, your body. And guys don't have that analogous process necessarily. The peer pressure they do, but they have the peer pressure to fit in these rigid stereotypes that we've been talking about, and maybe girls do as well. Now, when it comes to high school, this is why I hate fucking high school, it becomes even more exaggerated. Because to me, in high school, status for girls is based on attractiveness. Maybe not always, but I think the hotter you are, the more power you have. I just go mean girls with this shit, the plastics. And guys, maybe not always athletic ability, but some kind of status like money, like your, you know, parents are rich or whatever else, you know, drives your popularity. I'm not saying these things are right, and maybe I'm wrong about it. I wish we were in class because I haven't been in high school for a long fucking time, you know. But we know that this, you know, was a witness in the sociobiology lecture, and some of this was too, right? What is that? Well, your body's coming alive. And you have these hormones, and your hormones, from an evolutionary perspective, are driving all the stuff that we talked about in sociobiology. Now, one of the things, even though I love Anna Ferris and I love the house bunny, I love girls that are ditzy, but that goes back to your project, clowning, but acting dumb. It's like, that's what I noticed about my sister. She wasn't dumb. She was a straight-A student, but she would act as if, because it's like, oh, if I'm ditzy, that's sexy. And it's like, yeah, but you're not dumb. And so I used to show this video in class, but y'all are in class that's all about this stand-up comedian. She goes into, like, you know, how if you're a girl and you act dumb, you can get just about anything you want. And it's really silly, but she's kind of being serious about it. Okay, on this next slide, I really love this. I know I say that about everything, but Sells in 1980, she said something important happens in high school. You get to choose your classes. And so when you start to choose your classes, one of the things you might do is avoid science and math. It's like, fuck that shit. I'm not taking that. That's really hard. Now, see, when I went to high school, it's like just like my, all my other friends, our parents put a lot of pressure on us. It's like AP physics, AP calculus, AP English. It's like I was already taking all that hard shit before I got to college. Actually, by the time I got to college, I already had a lot of college credit. So that was kind of a good thing because I didn't filter. This is supposed to be a filter up here in, in case you're wondering. I didn't filter myself out of those careers. If I wanted to be an engineer, I could because I already had the preparation. If you didn't take that shit in high school and you get to college on day one, you're fucked. you got to go back and take remedial algebra and then trig and then finally make pre-calculus and then calculus one, two, and three and then work your way up. I was already ready to go into that shit. And so I don't know if guys and girls differ in this. I say they do. Otherwise, why would they have a STEM program if there wasn't a huge disparity in those kinds of things? Okay, so self-verification. I know I've talked about the self-fulfilling prophecy, but that's when my belief about you makes something about you come true. Self-verification is when I have a belief about me and I make that come true. Like if I believe as a girl that girls aren't as good on math and science or I'm not as good, I might avoid taking those classes, filter myself out right over here. Hopefully you like this. And then as I filter myself out, that confirms that I'm not good at math and science so I can't have a STEM career in mathematics or engineering or technology or science because it's like, well, you have to have all that remedial stuff to build your way up, to have the foundation to even start, right? And if girls are doing this in high school, by the time they get to college versus boys have a lot more pressure to do this, I mean, this is one of the reasons you start to see the difference across the genders. Now, in college, I don't know if this is still true or not true, but I always call it plan B. Men don't have a plan B. Like when I got to college, I didn't think, well, if I meet a girl that's really rich, maybe I don't have to work and I can just like have her take care of me. I don't have that option. Plus, I'm just not that hot. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Maybe I would if I was hotter. But men are, I think, taught like, dude, you got to take care of yours. Like get yours. You know what I mean? Even if you don't have a family, you're going to take care of yourself. Whereas women might have that plan B, like, well, I do need to have a career, but I might have a family and a husband and we're going to work together. I don't know if that's the thing.
uh, for gay people, they're going, fuck that shit. But even then, you know, people work together, right? So, I don't know. I have these silly things about Plan B. Like, does it matter how you're doing in college as long as your husband is doing good? Or, you know, I nabbed one. This is my favorite thing, these t-shirts right here. <laughs> Sorry, girls. But you could say, oh, Tim's way off base. Well, this is right here from 2015. Look at engineering. Yeah, we've come up from the 1960s, but in 2013, still 80% men and only 20% females. Now, in social sciences and some of the other things like natural sciences, biology and stuff doing better, right? Even business, I think, is on here. Yeah, the yellow one, you're doing 50-50. So that's a great thing. Okay, so gendering degrees. This is from 2013, same year. 76% of physicists are men. 75% of computer scientists are men. 67% of musicians. But then you come over here in the softer sciences. That's why I was saying soft versus hard. And like psychology, 80% of psychologists are women. So there's this disparity. I, I used to make this joke with my friend because he was an engineer. It's like, we don't have any girls in our class. <laughs> it's like, all I do is have girls in our class. And that's been occurring over time. Now, I think I have a couple more to show. This one right here, I know it's hard to read, but construction and mechanical and electrical engineering, almost all men, 90, almost 90%. Physicists, almost 90%. Uh, aerospace engineering, 90%. 85 percent is computer science and civil engineering whereas women fashion interior design social work nursing occupational therapy see nursing is still real women happy now this does translate into something i'll talk about later which is how much do you get paid look men dominate all the highest paying categories at least over here uh, in 2015 <laughs> That's not a good thing, you know what I mean? So even though we're talking about equality, later on I'll talk about the 81 cents on a dollar that women earn. And if I was a woman, I'd be real mad about it because my pay should be the exact same thing as a man's pay. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. I'm really tired now. I'll see you next time.